Or is it? Yeah, yours. Yeah. yeah. All right. So thanks, everybody, for sticking around. Uh, this is actually going to be my favorite presenter of the day. Uh, I think completely because she's my daughter. So, uh, but she's going to be talking to us today about the programming language Scratch and how it's for kids and maybe for other people too. So, McKenna. So welcome to so welcome to Scratch for Kids by me, McKenna Laverty. So who am I anyway? <laughs> I'm McKenna Laverty, and I'm an 11-year-old sixth grader from Cumberland, Rhode Island. And I've been using Scratch since January 27, 2015, when my dad introduced me to it. And I'm Racy Meyer on Scratch. And how I started was I wanted to make Minecraft mods. So my dad asked someone what would be a good way to get started, and they suggested Scratch. So a while later, I was in my bedroom, and I heard meowing noises coming from the coming from the living room. So we didn't have any cats at the time. We have two of them now. And so eventually, I walked out into the living room because what were these meowing noises coming from? And it turned out that it was my dad who was testing out Scratch. And so I started playing with it too. And then the day after, I signed up. So what is Scratch anyway? Well, it's a, programming, it's a programming language, but it's for kids just like me, and adults can use it too. And the recommended age range is 8 to 16, but it is really for anyone. So it was created by MIT on March 5th, 2007, and you can find it at scratch.mit.edu. And it's completely free to join, and with 17.7 .7 million members and nearly 21.6 million projects, yeah, and this little orange guy you see over here, that's the, scratch, that's the Scratch mascot, who does not have an official name, but he's just the Scratch cat. So the way that code is, so the way that you code in Scratch is blocks. So they have a drag and drop code style, and there are a total of 145 of them as a Scratch 2.0, the most recent version. And you can even make custom blocks to do your own functions, just like you'd find in any other code language, except not with blocks. And the blocks can even snap together and interlock to create scripts. So for example, what this script would do is when the project first started, so it would do this code inside the loop forever. So it would move 15 pixels across the screen in whatever direction it was facing, then turn to the right 10 degrees, a thought bubble would appear above its head saying, hmm, for two seconds. It would play a popping noise and then reset its size. And that would continue on forever. So the community is a very big part of Scratch. And so, so one of the biggest parts of Scratch's community is that you can share projects and keep them hidden if you want to. So because I mainly use Scratch for art, and I have a ton of different art projects, most of them stay hidden. But I could do whatever I want if I wanted to. So you can also comment on projects. And Scratch has, and Scratch has a sensor to block out bad words, although you can put them in projects, but the project will very likely be deleted. And so a way to gain reputation in Scratch is by followers. If you're yeah, if your projects are good, people will follow you. And so just generally, the more famous scratchers have more followers. And there are even studios, which are like little clubs, I guess, where you can add projects and <laughs> where you can add projects and comment on studios. And studios even have curators and managers, which are just people that can do more stuff with the studio, like adding projects, changing the name, and changing its description. So here are some types of typical Scratch projects. A lot of Scratchers are animators and will often make funny animations, although Scratch animations really can be anything. And the main reason that a lot of people are interested in Scratch is so they can make games. And simple games are really easy in Scratch. But then you get to the more complex stuff, and it looks like it would take like weeks and weeks, maybe even months, to make some of the more complex stuff, which 
I do have a really good example of a complicated Scratch game I'll show you guys later. So you can also refactor other projects, also known as remixing, which gives you your own copy of someone else's project so you don't change the original. And you can just do whatever you want with someone else's project and it doesn't even, and their original doesn't even change. It's just your version. So people can also make music in Scratch and using note blocks, which are a special kind of block that will play a certain note for a certain amount of time. And another, and another common type of project in Scratch that kind of ties in with animations and music is MAPs, which the Scratch team really likes. And basically what they are is one person will take a song and cut it into parts, and other people will be able to take the parts and animate them. So, I, so with a lot of you being programmers, I bet you're going to be familiar with the Hello World script. Where Hello World, if you don't know, is usually the first script that, program will, that programmers will make when trying out a new language. And this is how to do it in Scratch. One flag clicked, say Hello World. So my dad created this, this wonderful man right over here. And it took maybe 30 seconds, two minutes, and he's totally new. So that just shows how easy it is to get started. <laughs> so here are some common types of scratch blocks. The start project block, aka one flag clicked, which when you click the green flag button in the scratch interface, which I will also show you later, anything that is under, anything that is snapped to the underside of this block will run. This is the move this is the move ten this is the move certain amount of steps block. You can specify the number or anything that has a little white box like that you can specify. So and the sprite, the character in the project, will just move a set amount of pixels across the stage. You can also turn the sprite, which right and left and you can just say how many degrees you want it to turn. And a lot of you are probably familiar with variables, which is a way to store data inside code, and is commonly used for keeping score in games and things like that. So here are some more common scratch blocks. There is the if else, which you see over there. You can snap things with this shape into there, where if this happens, then do something that you can put into here. If that does not happen, then do something that you can put into here. There is also a different version of this block that's just if then, no else. So, and then we have the sensing touching block, which when the, when the sprite is touching a certain thing, be it the mouse pointer or another sprite, you can pick whatever you want from a drop down list. It'll do a certain thing, because you can just put it right in here. And this is the RNG, or random number generator. So you can choose two numbers, and the, and the sprite will randomly pick a number between them. So another part of Scratch that you don't see very commonly, but is still pretty cool, is Makey Makey, which lets you turn objects into input and output devices for your code. And this can be bananas, a drawing, alphabet soup, Play-Doh, anything you want, really. And so it relies on a board, uh, oops, sorry. So it relies on a board, alligator clips, and a USB connector to connect to your computer and do the code. So when I used a Makey Makey, it was at Scratch Day, which brings us to the next slide, Scratch Outreach. So MIT hosts a Scratch Day every year in May. Usually it's on the 14th, but this year it's on the 6th. I already got tickets. <laughs> and there are going to be hundreds around the world, not just, not just one in Cambridge. And so, and you, and you can also run unofficial meetup groups for Scratch, which are usually just for like learning how to code and beginners and things like that. So, and even schools are using it to teach their students how to code. So now, we get to the fun part. Who wants to see a Scratch demo?
All right, so this is the Scratch front page I'm currently signed in. And so whenever you log on to Scratch, this is what you see. Uh, Scratch.mit.edu, remember that. <laughs> so then, when you hit this little Create button up here, it brings you to the Scratch editor, which I've already laid out a couple of blocks to show you which you can select them from here, which will usually be referred to as an API, or Application Programmer's Interface, used to show all the things that you can do with code. So we're always going to start with this block, when flag clicked. Um, don't mind it. Don't mind that, it's just apparently I'm not signed in. So. So do you want to see how the script can move across the screen? So what it does is you can drag the move 10 steps over here. So, and I run the project, click the green flag button, and the sprite will move. So, and then I can also get it to turn, which let's say we want it to do this twice. So when, when you start up the project, the cat will move across the screen and turn 15 degrees twice. If you keep running it, you can see him just gradually moving and spinning. <laughs> so here's another commonly used thing in Scratch. Let's just get him to go back to his normal position, I guess. So another commonly used thing for beginner scratch projects is the say block, where when you put this, a little bubble will appear above the character's head saying something. So what do we want the cat to say? So now when we run this project, let's just, where is it? Just get him to point 90 degrees again. So when we start this project, he will move 10 steps, rotate, and say, welcome to B-Sides for two seconds. And then you can also use effect blocks, where the character can change color or do all these other things <laughs> that you'll be able to experiment with on your own. So now when I run it, he'll change color after saying welcome to B-Size. So, see, it's green now. <laughs> and so then we can also get it to play sounds. Let's just see if... Can I turn the volume up? So now if we put that on there, he'll meow after all this. Let's just get him to meow and say welcome to B-Sides at the same time. That'll be fun. So now another block that we can use is all these lovely control blocks, where the first one, we can get him to do something forever, where basically, never going to stop. So, so now what we can do is, for less obnoxiousness, repeat the forever block with repeat 10, which just lower this down to 4. Now he'll only do that 4 times. So now let's get another one of these blocks in here, the if-then block. So, and this brings us to our next block, which we saw in an earlier slide, the touching block. So let's say if he's touching the mouse pointer, he'll do this. If he's not doing that, he'll wait one second, go to Let's just get him to go to some random place. Let's 
So, and let's throw an x0, let's throw a go to block in there. So he resets his position at the start. So now you can notice that he waits one second and then just kind of headbutts because he's a cat and cats headbutt. Why isn't this working? Let's just get rid of the else for now and make this a regular if then. We're having some technical difficulties. So this has no else part and we'll only do this if it's doing a certain thing. Yeah, I have to have not worked with if thens in a while, so I can't remember how they work. But now I remember I have to put a forever block in here, which now I do not have to do it at the very beginning of the project. And instead, it'll work forever. I don't think he likes being touched so much. <laughs> so now, do you want to see an example of a really good, complicated Scratch project? I think it's actually the most famous Scratch project of all time. Oh, <laughs> sorry, just, just I'm just I'm going to show you one more thing. Where so now we can use the pick random one to ten block where now he won't say hello for two seconds. He'll probably say it for a bit longer. So that's what you can do with the pick random block. It'll pick a random number between whatever you want. You can change it. So now we get on to the complicated advanced stuff. So this, is a, so this is a scratch version of Minecraft. And you can see the code is extremely long. And I could never do this in a million years. Ooh, did he put something down here? Nope. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a crazy example of how complicated scratch can be. And then there are even more scripts. You can just go through the sprites and it's just so many things in here. It's insane. So, so yeah, do we have any questions? Yeah I'd, yeah, I'd say the Scratch community is pretty good in general. So you can just kind of click around, like, you can click on people's projects, and, like, I'm not actually going to post a comment on this guy's profile, but you can comment on things. You can love and favorite projects. Yeah, back in I think 2015, I built a uh, I built this pretty big game that was supposed to be like some sort of battle with my character, and the coding is pretty impressive. But I but I think that but I think that the idea. But I don't really like the whole idea of it anymore. Like, I still like the idea of a battle with your character. But I think even though the coding was good, it wasn't really well thought out. But it was still probably the best thing that I've ever made on Scratch. So any other questions? How do you start with the 
Yeah, I've yeah, I've tried to program with Python, but I wasn't very interested in it. So, yeah, that was around when I started Scratch, I guess. So, now I'll just make animations on Scratch. I have one more question. Uh, what, what's the youngest person you know who's been, who's been uh, working on Scratch? Yeah, I, I don't know who the youngest person I know on Scratch is, but yeah, I, but I think that, but I think like the youngest age that you could easily find on Scratch is six. And even like some parents will use Scratch. Like the paper Minecraft I just showed you is done by, is done by a parent. Or yeah, if, if we were to look at his profile. So there, so there are about 17 million Scratchers and 55,297 of them follow him. That's 922 whole pages of followers. And I only have a few over 200. So, yeah, feel free to, yeah, feel free to check me out on Scratch if you want, because I'm Maurice Meyer. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all we have.